So we have David and Tracy Sellers with us again this week from Vows to Keep. And before we jump into the topic they have, I'm going to make a confession to you. In about 22 years of my marriage life with my husband, he has never figured out how to make the bed. And it drives me crazy. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I go home and I think, ah, couldn't he just pulled the covers over today? But you know, God's been working on me and saying, what does that really matter in the end? The enemy wants to let that be a wedge and allow me to continue to get frustrated but I have to keep my focus on the things that God has. And you know what, in the end, whether he makes the bet or not, it's really not going to affect our marriage. Well, maybe my issue is just a minor one, but I know there are marriages everywhere that have things that can trip up those covenant relationships. Yes. And what are the things that you see in your counseling as you work with couples in these situations? I would say the biggest one is keeping score always being in judgment of the other person. Where are they at? Where are they performing right? What have they done so now I can get this because they had that? Like, she got the new couch, so now I get to go golfing three weekends in a row and just kind of have a little comeback from what she did to me. Or perhaps the wife didn't pay the electric bill and now they got slapped with a late fee, so the husband's like, got that invisible scoreboard on the wall. Well, she's down two points for that. And then she dresses up for a date and calls the sitter and all of a sudden the scoreboard is even again. Scorekeeping in marriage is a big one. So that's not a good way to live a marriage? I mean, it sounds like it comes out even in the end. <laughs> well, we find that oftentimes uh, couples that are keeping score, it's, it's usually just one of them that's keeping score. Uh, it, it is not necessarily always these exact same scenarios mm -hmm. that we talked about, but you do find that the intimacy in your marriage is almost always affected by someone who's keeping score. And when, when things are good, they're really good. But when the scoreboard's looking bad, boy, the intimacy is just about gone in, in your marriage. The deciding factor on what your day could look like, on the, the decisions you're gonna make, oftentimes is based upon what's on the scoreboard. And in a marriage, it can almost be this invisible uh, determining factor that's gonna set the course for our days, our weeks, and the, the tone that we have in our marriage. So. As we talk with couples, we often ask them, you know, what are the things that you might be keeping score on? Because scorekeeping basically implies that someone owes someone something. There's a mm -hmm. debt there. There's something that we're keeping track of. And we're often not very good at keeping track of the debt that I might owe to mm -hmm. someone else. We're also not very good at keeping track when our spouse is maybe doing average or normal, things we just expect them to do. That they don't get any extra points or any ongoing points for that. It's only when it's something super awesome in many cases that we would give them any kind of extra points or any points at all. I would think the average person is not thinking I'm keeping a score. It's kind of a subliminal thing, but it definitely happens. So Tracy, what's, what's the next step for people? I think that I want to read a parable right now from Matthew chapter 20 and this pinpoints it. These are some guys who are keeping score. Let's see what they did says, a landowner went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a certain wage for the day and sent them into his vineyard. Now this is like five, six in the morning. These guys are gonna work all day. The landowner goes into town three more times and hires more workers at nine o'clock, at noon, and at five. So when evening comes, maybe you can guess what happens. Call the workers and pay them their wages, he says, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. He pays them all the same wage and not everyone has the same reaction. It would be interesting I think for us to think through who do we relate to and as we talk to couples mm -hmm. this is one of the questions we ask them. You know, who do you relate to in this parable because many of us are going to relate to the slackers who started at the end of the day <laughs> and are going to be very rejoiceful about the fact that I just got paid the same wages as, uh, as everyone else. I mean this was a very generous wage. And those people tend to be people that we could say, okay, you probably recognize that God has been very gracious to you and maybe you're very good at accepting that grace. Mm -hmm. In some ways, we're not necessarily thinking about the consequences of the fact that maybe we don't deserve it. Um, there's others though that would be saying, no, I really relate with the person who labored all day. I've been in the hot sun and I just watched someone get something that I deserve for all my hard work. And that's not fair. That's not fair. Those tend to be the people that are the scorekeepers, so to speak, right? If we're worried about fairness, 
this becomes something that in marriage will cause us a lot of problems. Jesus tells us that we can learn from him and not carry around a heavy load because when I know he's keeping score on me, that's a heavy load for me to carry, but he's realized that's a heavy load for him too, always waiting for me to mess up, always watching for that, and me always wondering when I'm going to and when he's gonna change that number on the scoreboard. So let's learn from Jesus here in Matthew chapter 11. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and that can be very wearisome and burdensome, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. <sighs> okay, <laughs> we don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> we can learn from Jesus. Jesus is basically saying, you know, he's gentle, he's humble, and a humble heart is someone who says, I'm gonna serve, I'm gonna give, my desire is for you first. My desire is to not be on a performance treadmill or not to not put you on a performance treadmill because that's not what God does of us. Jesus is basically paying the price for all of the negative things that we've done and he levels the playing field for us. He asks us though to learn from what he's done. He asks us to do the same kind of things. Mm -hmm. He says don't keep score basically because he's not doing that. So our job is to do for the other but not expect anything in return. Definitely, and I think when we keep the light of the gospel just right in front of us, that reality of what Jesus has done for us, then it's gonna be easy to forgive. It's gonna be easy to not keep score anymore, to emulate our Savior, and what a relief in the end. It sounds like it is so important, no matter where a person is in marriage, to make sure that the scriptures and a personal relationship with Christ is just at the forefront every single day. It absolutely is. Yeah. Wow. Incredible information from David and Tracy Sellers, Vows to Keep. We hope you have been gleaning a lot from all of these segments that we've been sharing with you. And we want to remind you that they are available for you to watch again anytime, any moment of the day, in that heightened moment where you think, ah, oh, this is just not going to get better. Or maybe when you're praying for your children or your grandchildren and you're watching their marriages dissolve as well. This information is here for you. You can watch it on our website again at WTLW.com. And here's where you can get more information. You can connect with David and Tracy personally. Remember, they do marriage conferences. They do marriage counseling. They have all kinds of opportunities to provide fun, exciting things in marriage and some of those lifelines that will keep it going. There's their website on the screen. They've got a Facebook page and you can email them right there, vows2keep.com as well, info at vows2keep.com.